This is how my story goes Pain and joy, I've had it all Had it all Can I tell you my story? Welcome to the EN Show and today I am thrilled, I'm excited. I've got Sonia Chivayo with me here. Ah, uh, Sonia, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so Sonia, I, I said to myself, okay, so when my team brought the name Sonia Chivayo, I was like, what am I going to talk to Sonia about, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, where, where do, okay, so where do I start? Mm. And then we did research on you and then, oh my Lord, I'm so blown away. Um, I realized at the end of the day, you are such a layered person. And Thank you. You ha- are a mom. I am. A mom of two. Beautiful babies. Thank you. And you have a story to share about Jojo. I John. do. Sorry, I call him Jojo because Sam, right. my daughter, always <laughs> says, Jojo, Jojo's so, mom. My daughter actually gave him that name, Jojo. Really? Yeah. So, you okay. know, once she gave him that name, it just stuck. It stuck. You know? Tell me about John. So John is my firstborn son. Right. And um, he actually turned six recently. And his journey's been unique because um, I had my son in the States. He was an emergency C-section. And everything about my son was, you know, a mother's dream. So he was really sharp. Nine months, he was already walking. I mean, singing Old McDonald's. He used to love Old McDonald's, you know. And then around the 17, 18 month mark, my son just regressed. He went Mm -hmm. completely mute. He stopped talking, no eye contact, didn't want cuddles. And if you admit it's my firstborn son, you know, and we just thought, okay, maybe, you know, there's no one else to compare him to. So, we, you know, we were stuck in just being like, okay, maybe he's just at 18 months and that's just kind of what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, but I guess at the back of my mind, you know, you you know something is, is not mom, okay. You, got, you have that feeling, right? Yeah, that something something's not really right. But um, at that time, I was perfectly okay with coasting with him being like that, thinking that maybe it'll just kind of rectify itself as we go on and then um, on holiday with um, one of my sisters. So I'm from four girls. So the sister just above me, I'm the third one. Um, She just kind of spent some time with us away. And then she was like, you know, um, have you heard of this thing called autism before? Wow. And then she kind of highlighted some things that I'd never really just said out aloud that, no, my son doesn't have eye contact. My son isn't talking. You know, I just kind of thought he just doesn't want to talk. But when your sister said that, you know, what What was your first instinct? Because I have sisters that are very passionate about my kids and mm. our sisterhood is like real like that. Mm. So what... At first what it was like you? a slap in the face because yeah. it was kind of like, what's wrong with my child? You know, and what's my child done that's made you think he's anything other than just a child? You know, but um, I'm. It, it's a personality trait. I always try like to think, okay, wh- you know, where's this coming from and what does this really mean? You know, and then I think when I kind of went back into my own little space, I was like, oh, but, you know, she didn't lie about anything. She's telling some truth. Yeah. And, you know, and she just kind of guided me and was like, listen, read up on it. And, you know, there are things you can do because it's still early. He's mm-hmm. only about the 18 mark. So, you know, I got back home. And to be honest, at first I was like, nah, you know, maybe this isn't really, you know, my portion. <laughs> you know, maybe it was just a bad weekend away or whatever. And then... Yes, with you, I was really confronted with it when he was now at school and now it was manifesting in school. So I think it was almost like a push from God to say, okay, I gave you the first sign. Yeah. You didn't take now it. I'm now I'm in your ear. Now you don't have a choice. You have to kind of confront this head on. So at his school, you know, the, the tantrums had now gotten a bit excessive. They were not disrupting the class. So are they, tell me about, so, so for someone who is watching the show, mm-hmm. what are the things that we need to be, cognizant of and what are the things that we need to look out for what yes. what was what did you see so his for me, behavior you know if you have a child that just wants to be by themselves and um it's to a point where even if you try hug them or hold them they actually don't want that affection the physical touch. they don't want the physical touch because autism really it it deals with communication and interaction so physical touch is interaction mm-hmm. so kids that don't like to be hugged touched picked up that don't want to be in crowds that don't have eye contact, that don't respond to their name. So I actually, after we came back from the holiday, I had a season where I would just look at my son and say his name. And, you know, 
I would really want him to just respond, but he would carry on doing whatever he was doing. So they don't respond to their, their name. They become fussy about eating. You can have violent tantrums or, you know, they can become very obsessive with one thing. So if it's the iPad, which I'm sure most parents kind of notice immediately because they're just on their iPads, they just want to be on their iPads. Or if it's a toy, it's just a toy or it's repetitive um, behaviors and mannerisms, you know, blocking their ears, rocking some, you know, just anything that's quite consistent and done in certain points. So some kids, when they're not comfortable, revert to that same action. Action, okay. So, my so there's son, a sense of comfort that that's Yes, it's a bit of a comfort and, yes, and a bit of obsessive compulsiveness that comes with it. So my son was displaying all of those things, but I guess maybe when it's not all put together and aggregated, you don't see, you know, instantly say, okay, this is wrong. Maybe, okay, I've taken him to go get his hair cut. Okay, he doesn't like the noise. That's normal. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, maybe, you know, it is loud here. You know, and in your in your mind, you try and make excuses. Yeah. But when he was kicked out of crash, wow. <laughs> it was, that, it, was, that it, was it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. But yeah. bottom line is, I'm, I'm so grateful actually for the head teacher who, you know, she put me aside and she just said, listen, your son is not coping. And there's a bit, there's a lot of stimulus here. He needs to go somewhere where it's a little bit more calm and, and just a little more focused on him. And I'm honest with my son's story. You know, I cried my heart out. I, I don't think there was an office. I didn't cry. And they, I don't think there wasn't a teacher. I begged and pleaded with. Because I mean, there's denial that happens. It was denial. It was, this is not my portion, you know, yeah, but yeah. that wasn't going to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. You know, we needed to get him the help that he needed. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, I'm so grateful for the teacher who, she literally held my hand. She made an appointment with me and she was like, I'm going to take you to a school that I think your son needs to be at. And, and, I remember, and, and God is just incredible because honestly, he got you to a place where someone cared enough yeah, to, to hold my hand. To she hold physically hand. took me there. That's amazing. She physically took me there. And I remember when I got there, I was just like, no, this isn't it. You know, I remember I got to the crash and, the, you know, there was no color anywhere. Everything was like just black. Land. Bland, yeah, the tires were black, the trampoline was black, and I was like, there's no color here. You know, how do kids thrive in this, you know? And I mean, although she was talking to me and explaining everything, I was just like, no, I, I, you know, I don't want to be here. What more, my son? You know, and I cried again, you know, and then I think we all cried. (laughs) It must have been tough on not only yourself, but also your husband and and the family. But, you know, Sonia, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, I want us to share about that. To say, you know, once you accepted as a mom, what was that acceptance looking like for you? Mm. But what was happening around you and with the family? And so this is the Ian Show, and I'm with Sonia Chifayo, and we are talking about autism. So please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Ian Show, and I'm with Sonia Chifayo. So, Sonia, we were talking about the fact that now you've been, you know, you've explored, um, you're cognizant of the fact that, you know, my child may have um, some challenges in terms of learning. People throw around this word called spectrum. Mm. What does that mean? And, you know, on the spectrum, where was John? Right. So when we talk about the spectrum, it's, it's directly related to the behavior of the child. So some kids are just quiet, but some kids are autistic and just quiet. So then you have other kids that are, I mean, they're breaking cupboards, they're violent. If you watch some documentaries, which is obviously what I did when I first found out about my son, in the UK, some parents can't even live with their kids yeah. because it can be violent. It can, it can be detrimental to the people around. And that is probably what's considered more cons- you know, severe. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're not functional. They can't comprehend. They can't speak. They can't interact. That's on the very, very extreme end. And they're not functional because some kids can be somewhat, have somewhat behavioral issues, but still function, still yeah. go to school, still get through school, get through a job. But then at the extreme case, I mean, these kids or people, some of them are adults, can't actually integrate into society. Mm-hmm. They're too far gone. So when we first found out about my son, my son was at the breaking of cupboard stage and he was, you know, just randomly whacking people. I'm so grateful because I always encourage people that the sooner you get the diagnosis, whether it's just a few of the symptoms and it's not all of them, seek the help. Find out what it is. Find out what it is, what it is. 
all kids deserve that kind of dedication and compassion to really just figure out, okay, you know, is what this kid going through normal? Or is this something that maybe I need help with? So, but how were you dealing with that with your husband? What was the conversation like late at night and you're sitting there and you're talking about John and you're saying, you know, he said, I'll provide. I don't really believe what you're saying. I don't know if I really understand it, but I'm going to give you the opportunity to pursue whatever it is that you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, that's what he did do well. I can't really speak on maybe his journey with it because I know for sure we had two different paths because obviously my husband is the provider. So I was the one going to all the therapies and I was the one breaking down and I was the one really, and you know, he would always just say what's needed and how much. Mm -hmm. There was not one day my husband ever said to me, no, mm -hmm. well, I think you're taking it too far. He was always supportive uh, in that regard. And I was also really lucky that it wasn't just my husband because maybe my husband couldn't conceptualize it. Yeah. But I had my sister who had done the research. My mom, you know, she was sending me links every day. She was like, have you looked at his diet? Yes. Okay, what's the nanny thing? <gasps> okay, I'm coming with you next time. You know, I was really lucky. That's something that a lot of people don't have. Mm, support systems are so key. It's so, so important. But I think in speaking to you, even before the interview, you were really emphasizing the fact that it has to be a, a mom's decision to say, if I accept, it starts with my acceptance. And it has nothing to do with me as a mom. Absolutely so nothing. How many people have you spoken to who say, Chico, dinere. Dakajiga, something. Yes, so many moms blame themselves. You know? yeah, exactly. But you know what I always tell them? I always say, listen, even if you pinpointed exactly what caused this to happen, you can't go back. Right. So why do you take yourself through this emotional thing? And to a certain extent, it's actually quite selfish because it becomes a you thing yeah. when really it's the time to really focus on the child. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always tell the parents. And I was really lucky that my sister was, you know, she was quite blunt when she was like to me, this is all in your head. It's not in your son's head. Mm -hmm. So the person who you need to make feel 100% that they're happy and the same and are living a normal life is your son, John. So when you actually get to the point where you realize, okay, I'm the one who knows that this school is different, it actually takes some of the burden off your shoulder. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and then you, you start solutioning. Yeah, you yeah. do. Because when you actually realize that the most important thing is, because it's an invisible condition, mm. and I want to highlight that, um, it's harder to actually be more proactive, which is weird. Because if your son breaks his arm, it's quite standard. Go to the doctor, get a cast. You know, the process has been done a thousand and one times. But this is invisible. So it's like, do I change his school? Uh, do I change his diet? You don't really know where to start and what to do. And then it's easy for us to just become, oh, me, woe is me. Oh, maybe I did something wrong. And then we focus on the wrong thing. Mm. With these kids, the sooner you get them help, the better. The, the better and you will see results. And that's something I really, really want to emphasize to moms out there that right now, maybe you've just gotten the diagnosis. You don't know what to do. You don't know it. Worrying about where it came from actually doesn't matter. Mm. Doesn't. Read up on it. Read Educate up. yourself. Yeah. And even, yeah. even that, it, there's so many theories. Why, why focus on the wrong thing? Mm. Focus on what your, your, your son or daughter needs in that moment. And so culture becomes a really big impediment because we're Africans at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we do, what we don't understand is translated into, hey, exactly. Listen, I'm honest enough to say that I went through that. Yeah. And I also tell a lot of moms who call me that if you need to pray, if you need to do whatever you feel you need to do to feel like you've done everything humanly possible. Do everything you can do so that tomorrow, whether this goes south, you can always stand in front of people and say, guys, you know what? I did everything I could. I tried. I tried my very best. There's not anything I heard that I didn't try. There's not a remedy I didn't try. So even if you're still at that stage of, okay, maybe this is spiritual, okay, have your five minutes. But we also need to get on with the practical and the physical. Mm. We do. Mm. It's all part of the package. And so when you got into action mode, mm. what was that for you? Because now, you, now you've accepted, now you know the situation mm. and now you're fighting for your child. Mm. Because as moms, the instinct is to ex do exactly that. Mm. Yeah. I have to fight for this child. Yeah. What was that now that you started planning out? So for me, something that I actually did initially was, and, and some parents are on the fence about it, is actually telling people. Okay. So for me, I felt it made my life a little bit easier just kind of telling people that, hey guys, my son is autistic, obviously friends and family. So that means I just have to operate differently, Yeah. right? So if I come to a function and I can't stay, it's nothing personal. I just have to focus on him. When it came to school, I mean, we broke down his diet. My son actually eats a very simple diet. Um, you know, there's a lot of research on preservatives and sugars. We really tried 
everything. Mm -hmm. And even when it came to the school, I just accepted it. My son just goes to the school. Whether I want it or not, or whether I'm embarrassed or not, it doesn't actually matter because when I put the action into play, to be honest, I saw the results. And and so you said within a six month period. In a six month period, my son. You saw progress. My son had calmed down. Wow. He was coming home. They believe in a lot of physical play and activity. Um, you know, he was coming down. You could sit down. He could sit on the table. You could ask him questions. And he was now starting to respond to questions and answers, which is all I wanted to hear because, you know, there's a, and I'll say this as a mother, there's a part of you that really connects with your child when you can hear your child's voice. So imagine me when I was now talking to my son and even if it was a one word response, for me, I, I would, I would buy eyes. him, yeah, I would buy him yeah. blue balloons because what he told me was his favorite color was blue and his favorite things were balloons. So our house was covered in balloons. But for me, it was a way to say, God, I, I connect with him and I feel him. Yeah. You know, because there's also that, you know, there's the autism that's going on. And then as a mom, sometimes you actually feel disconnected to your child. And you have that guilt. And in your mind, you're like, this is a normal, this is a natural. And as a mom, I should be able to connect with my child. But to be honest, it, it happens. And you're like, why do I Yeah. Man? You do. And, and so, you know what, Sonia, you told me something that was very profound. He went from not speaking to you asking him mm. in your car, mm. what color is your favorite color? And mm. he said blue. And we're going to take a break and I need to come back to that because no I think it's those moments that remain pivotal that get you geared up to even do more yeah, for him. Of course, him. 100%. This is The Ian Show. I'm with Sonia Chivayo. We'll be right back on The Ian Show. So we're back on the EN show with Sonia and, you know, Sonia, we were picking up on the fact that, you know, you had a moment with your son when he mm. spoke and you were telling me that sometimes autistic kids come from not speaking at all to speaking in full sentences. And like, I always say this, just because someone can't speak doesn't mean they don't understand and they don't hear. Right. So I think a lot of parents make the mistake of thinking that the, the way to measure your son's success is speaking, although it is a crucial part but it doesn't mean that they're not picking up things as they go. They're not comprehending. They're not understanding what you're teaching them. They just don't want to say it in some instances. So when my son started to speak, we made it a big deal. We celebrated it. That's why I told you I bought so many balloons, so many blue balloons. So when, you know, our, our occupational therapist was not like, stop buying the sun balloons, balloons. because it's becoming obsessive now. Wow. You know what I mean? But Yes, it, it is nice to hear your child's voice and how they think because unfortunately in society we interpret intelligence and comprehension through speech. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it is important. But I always tell people, don't stop doing what you're doing because they just can surprise you. And they're absorbing and they're taking it in. And All the time. I, I think that's what we... We, yeah. we actually don't understand. And you were talking about kids being super intelligent and super, maybe that's what also puts them onto the spectrum. Yeah. So some kids, my, you know, my daughter Sam was saying, mm. you know, some kids can start talking at age of two and they mm. start reading. Reading at age of two. Yeah. And, and reading novels, not just normal not books. Just, eh? And big words. Yeah. And so I think it's just, you know, societal appreciation. It is. On, and it's also just accepting that. It's not a, a terrible condition. It's yeah. just a different condition. They mm -hmm. just do things differently. Mm -hmm. They do it at their own pace, at their own time, and through their own understanding. But it doesn't mean that they're not going to be great contributions to society. To society. And I, I strongly believe that. I mean, my son, you don't even need to do his homework with him in grade one. Because he, for him, he taught himself his numbers at three. And he taught himself. I'm not saying anyone taught him just from watching iPads and seeing and liking the jingles. A lot of kids also learn from songs because for some reason their mind just might appreciate knowledge through... Through audio. Yeah, yeah. through audio learning. So, you know, they just we just don't understand a lot about them. But the more effort you put into putting your kids into environments where, you know, they excel, not in environments where they're always being told no, yep. the more you actually see your kid gets more confidence. And that's not even just an autistic kid thing. Any child, when put in the right exactly. yeah, environment, excel. Yeah. And that's really what you want, to put your, your child in an environment where they're learning their own skill set. They're actually sharpening other ones, figuring out what they're not good at. And there's so many at-home remedies 
that kids can be doing and parents can be doing to help extract all of that from their kids. Let's quickly talk about that because I know I, you know, you were talking about pets are very important yes. because taking care of the pet, but there's a connection yes, with animals. Yes, because if you think about autism, a lot of it is interaction. Right. So there's something about, you know, even normal people are just, some people love their dogs. No one can really understand. But I find autistic kids have this special relationship with animals where that's where they first learn maybe how to express, you know, love, compassion, consideration. And remember, it also teaches them other things like responsibility mm -hmm. and, you know, just a task to do. Okay, your, your puppy needs to go outside and wee. Take your puppy out. Mm -hmm. So they connect with animals and sometimes that's how they actually then learn to interact with other kids. My son used to do hippotherapy and that used to just calm him down. So hippotherapy, hippotherapy is when you go for horse riding. Okay. But it's recreational in that you go on the horse and you can now learn different things. So their motor skills, because a lot of autistic kids also struggle with motor skills. So if you see kids that can't use scissors, hold certain things, that's also a sign. So when they're now on the horse, you can now infuse other type of le lessons and learnings that you want to do. And my son would actually fall asleep because he'd find the motion really soothing. Mm -hmm. And it would be a way for him to focus on lifting his right hand, his left hand, throwing things, picking up, catching. So learning doesn't have to be in the classroom in the, you know, prehistoric way we've known it. it Kids can be learn anywhere. outside when they go for a walk, when they're doing physical activities. A kid... Uh, hanging upside down from a jungle gym, being told to stay like that up until 10 is learning how to count from one to 10, just wow. hanging upside down. But you said something to me that, that resonated and you were talking, it's not about money. So people who don't have money. It's not about money. You can still you work can, within yes. your means. It's not about money, but it's about dedication. It's about understanding what that child needs. Right. So they need routine. Some of them need a change in diet. They need helpers and family members around them to understand their, their situation, mm -hmm. right? They need, a lot of parents will say, oh, my son's autistic or my daughter, so they don't need potty training. They still need all the training all the kids that need. That you would give any They other need child. all of that. They need to be outside doing physical activity and they need that to just be in a more routine set up. They need to be, there needs to be some kind of predictable behavior. That's why they can do the same thing over and over again. So imagine if you teach a child that can do something repeatedly a good routine. Mm. It then puts their mind in an environment where it can now absorb more and then express more. Mm. So someone who wants more information or someone who wants to, to have a conversation, where should they go? So for, for me, I'm available on Instagram and I refer people to my occupational therapist whose name is Daryl. Um, I actually don't even encourage speech therapy until the child has you know, gotten to a point where they can sit down and focus. Right. So there's schools. I'm very happy to relay schools. There's schools like Spectrum, Stride, and I'm sure a lot of new schools that are popping up right now mm. that are focusing on autistic kids. My main mes message to parents is get your kids the help that they need. Get them to the schools that they need. Forget about social constructs, which tell us we all want our kids to go to private schools. We all want our kids to, you know, live this type of life. No one really cares. Your kids don't really know they're not at right. St. John's. That's a you thing. Get your child the help that they need. And a lot of it actually starts at home. Yeah. Auntie must know routine yemwana, diet yemwana. If your child is maybe going through a tantrum, do we go for a walk? Walks help calm adults down. What makes you think they don't help calm kids down? So that de-escalation needs to yeah. happen at a very basic level. Base, basic level. But I wish I had an hour with you, I but I, clearly I don't. So... Why are you talking about this? What is, what is your purpose in, in sharing your story? It's really gratitude, if I was really going to be honest, because when someone told me about autism, I didn't believe that I was going to see the other side to it. I really didn't. So I understand and relate to parents who are in that situation. So for me, I'm so grateful that the people who God put in my life were able to take my son as a special case and get him through the stage, you know, my son is six. He started grade one with all of his other age mates, which was something I declared in his life. You know, so for me, I do this because someone did it for me. Yeah. And I lose absolutely nothing talking about it. I absolutely lose nothing referring you to people. I mean, these are just contacts and people who do this as their own, you know, passion. And for me, my passion is really helping. Although I have a son, so I'm going to say little boys, but I know it affects girls as well. As well. Yeah. So for me, get kids the help that they need because really when they start to show you 
where their shining and where their sparkle is, you're blown away. And I want all moms to feel like that. And I hate feeling somewhere that a mom feels disconnected to their kid or ostracized or socially humiliated. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Yes, moms get the breaks and the help that you need. Yeah. Moms do need a lot of support when they do have kids with conditions. They do. <sighs> Mrs. Sonia Chivai. <laughs> Clearly, I need more time with you. But we're going to take this to Ian Extra. So for everyone who is watching, if you want to hear more about Sonia's story um, and her journey, please join us on Ian Extra. But Sonia, I just want to thank, first of all, my daughter, Sam. She's amazing. For, and she's done so much for so many kids. For, I, I can't believe she's I'm my daughter. You. She's amazing. I'm telling really you. really is. But I, I th I'm thankful for her because she's the one who introduced you to me. And mm. this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you um, for and just highlighting please, this. Please keep the conversation going. Definitely. Please do. I will. So if you have a young child, if you have someone within your ecosystem who is struggling with the same issues, it is way past time that we raise the red flag. Once again, this is the EN Show. I'm with Sonia, and we are sending love and light your way. Welcome to Ian Extra, and I'm with Sonia Chivayo. So, Sonia, there's so many questions that I had um, mm. and that we've been discussing. Well, okay, so we, we've clearly been discussing this all morning. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm forgetting to have the questions to ask. But um, with Extra, it kind of gives us an allowance to, to discuss the topics that we've like, neglected. Now, you have, a sec you have a second child. I do. I have two kids. Yes. And something I would say is, one, to the, some of the parents whose firstborn is autistic, don't be afraid to have the second child. Yes. I think a lot of moms, you know, internalize it and f try find fault in themselves and think that there's something that they did wrong. My son's autistic, my daughter's not. Yeah. And they're only, you know, 14 months apart. Yeah. I don't know the science, you know, if it have if it's just two people always make autistic kids or not. But I would say if you want to have two kids, have two kids. Yeah. It doesn't follow. You know, and I'm actually really grateful for Minana's experience because if I tell you she's so encompassing of all kids. Wow. She's actually such a, a great child. You know, she's got so much empathy and sympathy for kids. Mm. You know, she can play with kids that don't speak and kids that do and just kind of get on with it, you know? I think, but I think you've set the pace in the household though, because um, as moms and, you know, the, the minute you accepted, mm. you then allowed everyone else to kind of, you guided everyone else to yeah. follow suit. And she probably sees and mirrors you. And how did you manage and balance, you know, not giving so much attention to John and then neglecting her? Like everything you know? in parenting, it's a conscious decision. Right. So for me, I make sure her birthdays are big. I make sure she has her moments where she really feels like this is just about, about me. Yeah. You know, I'm not sharing the limelight. But then even if my son wasn't autistic, because they're almost, you know, the Irish twins, they're always going to do everything together, you know. But I also try and make certain things. Like, so her birthday, no matter what, we always get a special dress. She has her party. And it's not about her brother. It's about her. It's about her. Yeah. And she, we're, we're really lucky in our household that, like, she's kind of daddy's girl. Yeah. So whatever happens, her and daddy, they're also getting on with it. So she always feels like at one point in time, there's someone giving me a lot of love. But yeah. what you do find in kids that are in and amongst um, a child that needs a lot of attention is they can become a little bit more naughtier because mm. it's attention seeking. So as parents, you also need to be cognizant of that, that they are also seeking that attention. Right. So you need to actively do it. My daughter loves painting. And so I always make sure if you watch my Instagram, I bake with her and it'll mm. just be the two of us. And she knows it's just our moment. So I'll tell that, okay, this is Minana wanting just Minana time. Right. So as parents, you do have to realize that when you do have one child, a lot of the attention and the resources tend to go on that one child and you have to actively try balance it out. And it's okay sometimes to leave John at home and just go with Minana somewhere. And so you do a lot of almost like, you know, for failure to use another word, you do a lot of counseling yeah, to a lot of people who yeah, either contact you on Instagram. Yeah. 
Um, what are some of the things that you're seeing within the counseling? So you, you wow. mentioned that you it's men and women. Men and women. And it's, di- it's a different narrative for fathers. Yeah. Um, yeah I think so. a lot of men um, don't actually feel safe talking about it at home. Wow. So funny enough, when they meet an outsider like myself, I have men tell me, oh, I actually was sent your video. My son's also having the same issue. Uh, how did you do this? Or what can I do? I can't release, I don't know how to show that I actually also get affected with this. Because men do actually yeah. get affected by these things. I think a lot of the time women, we internalize as usual. And we think, he doesn't understand, he doesn't care. But sometimes it's harder for men to express that. So what I find, it's very balanced. There are women and men who are both concerned. And also a lot of moms guilt, uh, guilt trip themselves and don't actually just give themselves a lot of grace. Yeah. I always say, get a great nanny. Get her the exposure and the training she needs yeah. for that condition. Take breaks. Have friends. Self-care. Self-care. Yeah. It's, you're not being selfish. You're not being a bad mom. Just go somewhere where you don't want. I have moms who call me. And listen, I actually get into communities of moms with kids with spit. Because we have moments where we call each other and just say, okay, where are we going? I'm enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Where are yeah. we going? Yeah. Like where we don't want to talk about our kids. I, I, I think your generation is so lucky to have that. Because... Yeah. In when I had kids, I didn't have the you know, it kids can really test you, yeah. And, <laughs> and when you have many of them, yeah. they can really test you. But I think it's to say, I need to be okay mm. for me to be okay for my kids, yeah, definitely. And that is a journey a lot of people don't understand, yeah. So you self sacrifice yourself, mm, but to you the shouldn't. detriment of the family. So that's a really great message, and also be able to say, I'm, I'm tired, yes. I'm and tired. it's okay for you to be tired. Yeah, I'm but women are super women, and so society tells us we have to be there for everyone except ourselves. But I think some of that is because you've internalized it. Sometimes just own your space. I will yeah. go somewhere and say, "My son is like this," you know. So if, I remember there's a, a couple who I met, and we went to Steers, and their daughter was having a bit of an episode, so she was rolling on the floor. And then, you know, the dad was so, he felt so bad. And I was like, listen, this child's been, I was watching, obviously. So I was like, your daughter's been sad for 20 minutes. I think any child after 20 Would minutes be. is actually at the cusp. So yeah. because you have labeled your child, you then become almost strict. Every small thing becomes that thing, that, that autism, this is autism. When sometimes it's just the child also just being a child. And you remind me of something because time but go dara ada jewarungu isu suwa no atema wana wedu pusha projects is to beat the child into and violence submission. is not the answer. <laughs> oh my goodness, violence Don't triggers right. Train bad mannerisms because if you're teaching them that this is a, a a normal way to deal with a situation, when these kids get bigger and stronger, yeah, they'll use the same language with you. Wow. So I'm not saying don't not hit them. I think kids do need a healthy balance in their household. But, but it should comes in different Yeah, but discipline, forms. you can withdraw, you can seclude, you can, you know, take breaks. Don't make violence the alternative, the, the, the go-to measure. You know, some kids will be like, I'll beat it out of them. But it, it doesn't help because when that boy is like 18 years old and probably taller than you, yeah. Who are you beating? <laughs> Who are you beating? <laughs> and you know, now I'm looking at all my kids and they're like 12 yeah. and I'm like, okay, Who so I, I resonate with that. Yeah. But Sonia, this has been an incredible, incredible conversation. Thank you for thank you. highlighting I, it. From the bottom of my heart, thank I you for I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you on more platforms, bigger platforms. Thank you. I am prophesying this. Bigger thank platforms. You. Thank you. We will start really changing the conversation. I appreciate it. I just, my passion is just really the little kids that need the help. Who are voiceless. Who are voiceless. Yeah. You know, and just kind of battling in their mind. (sighs) Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it on the Ian Show Extra. And, you know, if you've got any questions for Sonia, please log on to her YouTube platform on her Instagram. um, And we will share those details. But, yeah, sending love and light your way. And please share, like, subscribe, do everything. We'll see you soon.